So I'm Lisa Gerhardt. I'm in the Nurse Data and Analytics Services. Um, hopefully everyone can see this screen. Um, anyway, sing out if you can't see my slides. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna talk to you about getting data into and out of NERSC uh, and sharing data with your collaborators. So uh, the first thing I wanted to let you know is that we have um, a dedicated set of, of nodes, they're called data transfer nodes, that you can use for moving data into and out of NERSC. Um, you can SSH directly into four of those nodes. They're at the, uh, this address here, dtn01.nurse.gov, um, all the way through four. Um, these, are, uh, these servers are optimized for data movement. They have high bandwidth network interfaces. They've been highly tuned for efficient data transfers. Um, and members of the data analytics services and the storage group have worked to make these really, really work well, along with working with ESNet to remove a lot of obstacles uh, in the WAN that are between us and our, our major science partners. Um, and we have a monitored bandwidth um, between NERSC and other major facilities, uh, so, such as other DOE labs and Slack, um, to make sure that data is moving as optimally as it can. <clears throat> These nodes have direct access to all of the NERSC file systems that what he had just mentioned. Um, you can log in there and interact with the community file system, the HPSS tape archive, Cori Scratch, um, and so you can use them to move data externally to other systems outside of NERSC, or you can move them, use them to move data internally between NERSC systems and NERSC HPSS. Um, so the, the, the take home from this is that if you're moving large volumes of data in and out of NERSC or between NERSC systems, you should, you should leverage the NERSC DTN. So you should, you should. If you're Hi, moving, Lisa. Lisa, Hi. sorry for interrupting. Yes. The slide's not moving forward and I don't see the full screen. Okay, let's see, thank you. That's good, okay. yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so use the DTNs to move large volumes of data into and out of NERSC or between NERSC systems. Um, if you are moving a lot of data, um, we recommend that you use Globus, which is a software stack um, that's optimized for moving data um, under the covers. It's basically parallel grid FTP. Um, and what that is, is it's something that parallelizes data transfer movement for you. Um, and it can, uh, so it's, it's, and they, oops, excuse me. They have a whole um, very easy to use web-based service. Um, basically it's a GUI, I'll show it to you in a minute, um, but it does automatic retries. So you set up the transfer and it'll move the data for you. And if you're moving 10,000 files and one of them fails, uh, it'll, it'll retry that, that, that file again. And it'll retry it over a, several times until it either succeeds or it reaches its quota. And, and then it sends you an email when it's done. And you can go to the website and check on these transfers. So it's really great for sort of fire and forget data transfers. Um, and we have a, a Globus endpoint um, and most major educational institutions have a Globus endpoint. Um, and if you don't have one on, um, from your target, you can set up a Globus personal endpoint. Um, and even that's a little better than just trying to move it yourself with secure copy uh, because it automatically does the parallel movements um, and it does the retry and notification when it's done. Um, so that extra stuff really makes data transfer much easier. Um, we also have, so there's a web-based GUI I'll show you in a minute. We also have um, some Globus, some scripts um, deployed at NERSC for command line transfers. Uh, and Globus also has a REST, uh, a REST API if you wanted to write your own sort of services to, to pull against it. Um, they have a nice Python software development kit you can also use to write scripts. Um, and they also have a, a canned uh, Globus Connect personal um, installation that works for Mac, Windows, uh, Linux that you can install on your personal laptop if you wanted to move data that much. Um, so, let's see. Um, so let me just do a quick demo of Globus. So this is the Globus webpage. It's www.globus.org. Um, and you can go here to this button, you get here the first time, you're gonna to need to create a Globus account. I've already created a Globus account. Let's assume that you've done that. So you can come here and you can log in. Um, and you can choose, once you get your Globus account, you can link it against your, your NERSC account or any other number of different accounts that are here. They have a whole bunch of different identities they'll accept. Um, and once you link your Globus account to that, you can log in with those credentials. Um, so here, sorry, gotta get my MFA up. Uh, so you can log in. And once you log in with this, um, this credential, it will, um, 
let you access the NERSC endpoints. So here's what it looks like when you log in. Um, so basically there's this GUI here. Um, you can go here and search. Um, so we have a bunch of endpoints. I recommend the NERSC DTN endpoint. This is the one that points directly at the data transfer nodes. Um, and then here is a listing of everything that's in your, um, in your home directory. Let's say I just wanted to put something, I'm going to use this to put this into another endpoint that we have, which is Nurse Corey. Um, and so here it's loading the, so it's also loading my home directory because they both amount the same thing, but you can click on a file you want to move and then you can go over here and, and put a place where you want to put it. So let's say that I've got a folder, I'll put it into this bar folder. And then you just click on this start and it does the transfer. You can click on this to go see the details of the transfer and it'll tell you like, oh, it started. Um, and then when you when it's finished, um, you can hit reload to get it to go faster. So it already succeeded, it was just moving one file. Uh, and then it's also gonna send me an email that says, hey, your, uh, your transfer finished. Okay, so let's go back. So that's Globus. Um, it's pretty easy to use, uh, definitely recommend it. Um, so some general tips for transferring data, large transfers, we recommend Globus online if you can. Um, you can also, if you're moving large chunks of data inside of NERSC, let's say you have a, a bunch, several terabytes of data you want to stage to Cori Scratch, you can use Globus for that. Um, if you're doing smaller one-time transfers that are less than 100 megabytes or so of data, um, you can use SCP. Um, but Globus is also fine for small transfers too. Um, and then uh, the the data transfer nodes are really just for transferring data. Um, so please don't use them for non-transfer pur purposes. Don't use, don't run compute heavy things there. Don't, uh, if you can avoid it, don't run your workflows out of it. Let's move those to the workflow nodes um, and use the system login nodes for more, more general routine tasks like compiling. So one thing to think about when you're trying to get the best performance um, is that usually the performance is often limited by the, the remote endpoint. Um, so, you know, NERSC works really closely with ESNet to get um, the most optimal paths out of our system. Um, and a lot of institutions also have optimal paths into their systems, but then it's that last 100 meters or whatever to the computer you're trying to get through that usually is very difficult um, to, to get that highly optimized. Um, so uh, often the remote endpoint isn't tuned for optimal data transfer. Um, and so you can see low performances uh, just based on that. Uh, occasionally, on the nurse side, file system contention could be an issue, like Cori Scratch is very heavily loaded, so it's delivering data very slowly. Um, and also, don't use your home directory for, for large data. I mean, number one, it wouldn't fit. Number two, it, it doesn't perform well. Um, so keeping those things in mind, if you're transferring the data around and you're not getting the performance you expect, um, feel free to open a ticket with us and we'll will help you or work with ESNet to try and debug the issue. Um, so one special case I wanted to talk about is transferring with, uh, with into and out of the NERSC HPSS archive. Um, and so like Wahid said, we recommend you use our tape archive for archiving large amounts of data for a long period of time. And we have a pretty extensive documentation on this. I, I recommend you check it out. Um, it, so when you're done with your data and you, you don't think you're gonna need it for you know, about a year, you know, maybe it's like data from your paper, um, you need to keep it forever, but you don't think you're gonna be frequently accessing it. Um, that's the time you wanna put it into HPSS. Uh, and so you can do that um, either on the interactive DTNs by SSHing into there, or you can use our special transfer queue on Cori uh, to move this data to, into and out of HPSS. Uh, and we have two main ways on the command line that you can move data into HPSS. There's something called HSI, um, which is sort of like it, it's, it works with a put get method. So you can say HSI put this file and it'll put that file into HPSS. If you want to get it back out, you use get. Um, and so you can use that for putting individual files into there. Um, it also has some nice um, flags on there for like conditional access, like put this file into HPSS if, it, if the one in HPS, the one on the spinning disk is newer than the one in HPSS, then transfer it over. If not, don't do anything. So you can do some sort of, you can do some running backups of your system for things that have changed. Um, generally, if you, if you have lots of files, like more than about, a, about 10 or so, uh, we recommend that you use HTAR to aggregate them up. And HTAR 
bundles things up in the same way that tar does, um, except that the output tar file goes directly into HPSS. It doesn't hit your spinning disk. Uh, it can be really handy if you have, let's say, two terabytes of data that are in all in small files. You can use HTAR to bundle them all up and put the output into HPSS. So you don't need to have space for both of those things before you put it in. Um, and like I said, like what he'd said before, when you're bundling these things up, think about how you might want to come and get them back out. If you think you're going to get a whole year's worth of data all at once, maybe you put that into one bundle. If you think you're only going to need, I don't know, the calibration files or something, maybe you bundle those separately. Um, just try to think about how you might possibly want to get it out when you're putting them away. Um, you can also use Globus uh, for uh, our HPSS system, uh, but we actually recommend that you use our command line tools for external Globus transfers. Um, and part of this is, uh, this is because at its heart, HPSS is a tape system. And so if you put in, let's say, 100 or 1,000 files into HPSS over time and you want to come and get them out, um, they can be spread all across the tapes in the system in all different order, and you need to be able to sort them um, so that you're getting all the files that are on one tape at the same time, instead of, um, you know, getting it on a tape, and then the machine has to load another tape, go to the, it's a little robot, it has to go down the thing and pick up another tape and put it in. And so if you don't order them, so you're getting everything off the tape in order, uh, it can really slow down the process. Um, so we have these command line tools that have extra NERSC, um, extra code on top to do the ordering, the tape ordering for you. Um, and so, so I'm just going to do a quick demo of these um, command line tools. Um, so this is this is me and Corey, um, and you can get there's some documentation on this on how to do this. But to do the, to get to these tools, you say module load Globus tools, um, and then you can say which transfer files. So this is a, a helper script that will let you um, transfer start Globus transfers. Um, from the command line at NERSC. And so you don't have to use this just for HPSS. Um, you can use it for various other things. You could script it as part of your job submission. I'll talk a little bit more about that if you wanted to stage data uh, and then submit a job when it's done. Um, and so the way you use this is you say you have a source. Um, that's where this data is coming from. And this is normally a, a, an endpoint UUID, um, which you can get from the Globus endpoint page. It's this really long gobbledygook thing. Uh, but it also knows a bunch of shortcuts um, for the NERSC DTN endpoint. You can just say DTN um, for NERSC HPSS. You can say HPSS. So, um, so I'm going to pull from HPSS, and my target's going to be the NERSC DTN nodes, um, and my the output file. I'm going to I'm going to get some files from um, from HPSS and put them into um, Put them into my scratch directory. So I have this list of uh, files. So I've I listed the files that I have in HPSS in this text file. Uh, my output file here is in my scratch directory, um, and then it's going to transfer. It's going to pull from HPSS and move it to the the my global scratch directory. So I can hit return, um, and it'll think about this for a little bit, and then it'll give me a transfer ID. Um, and if I want, I could I could go to the website and and check on this transfer ID, or I can use this command line tool and check on the status. Um, and it's actually I only had just a few got a few files in there, just two files, so it's already finished. Um, and you can take a look in this directory, and these these files are here. Blink. So they've been copied over. Um, and if you wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, there's, there's also an example script, um, this stage data script, um, which you can give it the same, um, the same arguments, uh, but with the additional, the addition of a, an analysis script, a, a job script. Um, and so what this will do is it'll move this data over and it'll keep checking um, that until the data is transferred and then it will submit this analysis script job. So this is submitting to um, the transfer cluster and you can let's see we can look at the output of this file um, to see when it's done oops you can just watch this 
directory and what it's doing. It's set, it's set up the transfer and now it's querying every few minutes. Transfer is active, now it's succeeded. It submitted this analysis script job, which is going to use this data that's in place. Uh, and so you can see this, um, this, this stage data script is actually included in the, the Globus Tools module. And so you can take a look at this and, and if you wanted to use something like this for your own job submission, uh, you can just alter it a little, however you need to, uh, to make that work. Okay, so let's see. So that was how you would use the command line to get into and out of HPSS. Um, if you need to share with external collaborators, we have a number of different ways you can do that. Um, if you, so we have a public um, HTML access um, where you can, if you just need a simple, really bare bones, you need to share a few uh, very small files publicly over the web um, with anyone. Um, you can create a specific uh, www area in your project directory. And then those, any files that are put in there that are world readable are automatically available for public access under this URL, um, portal.nurse.dev project slash your project name. Um, and so that's a really simple way for you to share files with external collaborators. Uh, this, you can build on this www directory to build really um, very nice science gateways. A lot of groups have put a lot of work into this and have really nice portals that they use um, to access their data at NERSC. Um, and you can, you can build on this in the www directory, or you can also build um, web applications in SPIN, which is a, a, a I don't know if they talk, they're going to talk about that, but um, it's a, a way that you can set up containers uh, of really complex and really nice web pages and have them run in our NERSC system. Um, and then if you have large amounts of data that you need to share, like hundreds of terabytes, um, you can set up a Globus sharing endpoint and share it out over Globus. Uh, and these are, these are read-only endpoints. So let's say you have a big data set you need to share with someone. Um, you can set up a Globus sharing endpoint and then that has a permanent um, web address that you can use to share this data um, with either all Globus users, like anyone who has the address and is on Globus, or with a specific subset of just a few Globus users. Uh, it's your choice. Um, and so this is a really great way if you need to share large volumes of data and you can incorporate that into your web portals. Um, and there's some links here on how to, how to share these. Um, and so that's all that I had. Um, I don't know how I'm doing on time, but if you have any questions, I can answer them. <laughs>